Hi everyone and welcome to Inverter Always. I'm Dana and today we are going to talk about part two of the Daikin Nav Controller Technician Setup. Last time we focused on field settings so today we're going to finish things up. Let's jump right in. All right, you guys, so welcome back. In the last video, we discussed Daikin VRV indoor unit field settings on the Daikin Navigation Remote Controller. I'll go ahead and I'll link that video up at the top now. In that video, we didn't talk about all of the field settings. The goal of that video was just to learn how do we set the field settings and what are some of the most common field settings that we should be looking at on every application. There are many, many more field settings available to you. As we discussed in that video, make sure you're always referencing the installation instructions for the indoor unit you're making changes to because not all indoor units are alike. It's always very important that you don't just change settings willy-nilly because there is no undo and there is no factory reset. So be very careful when you are in the field settings screen. In today's video though, we are going to focus more on everything else that's in the service settings menu. There are other configuration options for the technician to configure depending on the application. Things such as energy saving options, so that's your set point range restriction. There's also um, the setting where you're going to set up your minimum heat and cool set point differential. So dual set points or single set points, things like that. And there's a few other settings that we're going to talk about in today's video. All right, guys, so to get us started today, I'm going to go ahead and put the nav controller up in the top left of the screen, similar to how we did in the last video. That way you guys can follow along as we go through the different configuration options in the service settings menu. And I will say again, I said this in the last video, the service settings menu is for service technicians only. It's not for the end user. There are some settings in here that you can um, set incorrectly and it can really hinder the performance of the system. So I'm not going to show you how to get into the service settings. You should know how as a service technician to get into this menu already. Uh, you have the materials available to you to get into this menu. Once you get into the service settings menu, we're going to go ahead and we're going to click the down arrow. We're going to go down to the energy saving options. In the energy saving options, you're going to have the set point range limitation. Uh, selecting this is going to allow you to set a maximum and minimum set point allowance for both the cooling and heating modes. This is usually more common in the commercial application. In a residential application, the homeowner really has the right to set their set points to whatever they want. So depending on your application, you may not need this setting at all. If you have a certain type of indoor unit, you may have other energy saving options populate. For example, the round flow cassettes and the smaller 2x2 two two cassettes that have an occupancy sensor accessory uh, does allow you to have a setback based on occupancy programmed into the controller. But on this NAV controller, I have a ducted unit, so that is not available to me on this unit. Again, as we've discussed in previous videos, if there is a feature that's not available on the indoor unit that you're working with, it doesn't pop up. So that way, you don't have to set unnecessary settings. After energy saving options, we have prohibit function. And this is pretty cool. You can do two different things with prohibit function. First thing you can do is you can prohibit specific buttons. So if I don't want a user to change the fan speed, for example, I need it set on high in a commercial application because the air balancer has done their job and it needs to be on high, I can go ahead and lock out the fan speed button. To do this, I'm going to click prohibit buttons and then any of the buttons I want disabled or locked out, I'm going to simply select and I'm going to make sure that it says disabled on the nav controller. Make sure you always hit the OK button to save. When prompted to save, make sure you're highlighted on yes and click the OK button. It takes you back to prohibit function. Now I don't have to lock out any of the buttons. I can if I would like just lock out modes, different modes of operation, not the mode button. When selecting prohibit mode, I now have the ability to lock out 
uh, any mode I don't want the user to be able to select. Again, this is going to be more for commercial applications. In commercial applications, we often don't want the user to manually, at the nav controller, be able to select the fan mode. We want them in heating or cooling. So we will often disable the fan mode, make sure you save, and then you're done. And this is pretty much preference based on the application you have on site. Now something I want to add real quick, when you are prohibiting just the mode, so you're not locking out the button, you're just going to lock out certain modes of operation. When you're done with that, all you have to do is save and then when you cancel back to the main screen, every time you press the mode button, the nav controller will simply skip the mode that you disabled. On the other hand, when you are trying to prohibit a specific button, uh, saving it is just first part is just the first part of the step. Once you save and, and then cancel back to the main screen, there is a secret combination of buttons you have to press simultaneously in order to activate or deactivate that lockout. Without doing that, you're still going to be able to press the buttons even after saving the settings in the prohibit function settings of the service settings menu. Um, I'm not going to share with you how to do that, but that is also in your materials, the same materials that shows you how to get into the service settings in the first place. So back in the service settings, the next option that pops up is the minimum set point differential. And this is where you're going to program whether or not that nav controller uses a dual set point or a single set point. By default, the nav controller is set up for a two degree minimum set point differential. That means if your heat set point is 70, your cooling set point can be no tighter than 72. And if you increase the heat set point to 71, it's going to push the cooling set point up to 73. Now your set points don't track. So if I lower my heat set point down to 68, my cooling step set point remains what it was before I changed the heat set point. And this works vice versa. If I lower my cooling set point down too far, as soon as it gets tighter than two degrees, it pushes that heat set point cooler so that it always maintains a minimum of a two degree differential. If I want single set point in my application, I can go ahead and just hit the down arrow and select zero degrees. Zero degrees means I have a zero degree difference, so my heat and cool set points are the same. That's a single set point. Now I'm going to heat and cool to the same set point. And you can have a variety of different options here. If I want dual set point, I can have a one degree difference, two degree difference, three degree difference, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to a seven degree differential between your heating and cooling set points. I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel back out now and we're gonna go down to the second page because we're not quite finished yet. I have the ability to extract the error history in the service settings if you need that. You're not changing any options here. This is just a nice uh, service uh, setting for you to gather information from. Indoor unit status, again, we're not gonna be changing any information here, but the indoor unit status does give you the thermistor data of the indoor unit. This is really cool. It gives you return air. It also gives you the liquid and gas pipe temperatures of the unit, along with the remote controller temperature. And it also tells you whether or not it's using the nav controller or the return air thermistor for uh, temperature control. Outdoor unit status doesn't typically pop up with much unless it's one of the brand new indoor units, so we'll skip it for today. And forced fan on, I apologize for the dog barking in the background, but uh, for forced fan on, that's for when you have multiple indoor units daisy chained back to a single nav controller. In the event that I need to program one indoor unit, to do one thing, but I want the other indoor unit to do something else. Not set point or mode or anything like that because they're gonna be controlled as one group. I'm talking about the field settings. In the last episode, we talked about setting field settings differently from one indoor unit to another when they're tied back to the same nav controller. Using forced fan, I can go ahead and determine which unit is which because as I go through the different indoor unit options, unit number zero's fan turns on and then I can establish physically on the site which one's unit zero, change unit zero to unit one, and then to two, and then to three, and so on and so forth, up to how many indoor units I have with a maximum of 16 indoor units. 
Don't ever, ever, ever select switch main subcontroller. In a NAV controller um, video a few episodes ago, we talked about how your NAV controller works. I'll go ahead and I'll link that at the top now. But we explained how the master controller works on a system that has multiple indoor units with a NAV controller on each indoor unit uh, on a VRV system, a VRV heat pump system, I should say. Your uh, indoor units are all controlled off of one master controller's mode. So the master picks the mode, everybody else gets to pick a set point. There's a specific process to change the master. Everybody always goes to service settings and they think that switch main subcontroller is change the master, but that's not the case. Switch main subcontroller is when you have two nav controllers daisy chained to one indoor unit. Think of a big banquet hall. And maybe you don't want to walk across the room to change the temperature. You could put one nav on each side of the room and then change the temperature from either one. In that case, one of the nav controllers is a main and one is a sub. That is different than master. The master picks the mode. The master controlled nav controllers are told what mode to be in and then they get to pick their own set points. I'll go ahead and I'll throw a picture of a nav controller that looks like the master up at the top. Now you'll see at the top of the screen there are no icons, but now if I put a picture of the nav controller that's a, a master controlled nav controller, you'll see at the top it says master controlled. That is master and master controlled, not main and sub. If you only have one nav controller connected to an indoor unit and you go into the service settings and you change main and sub, it's going to lock the nav controller out and at the bottom of the screen it's going to say sub RC and it's going to be stuck at that loading screen because it doesn't see a main RC now. Then you're going to have to connect another nav controller to be able to reset it. It's not impossible but it is kind of a pain in the butt and it does require power cycling the equipment. So just never ever change this setting unless you have two nav controllers connected to one indoor unit. That's pretty much it in the service settings menu. So really it's the field settings which you'll set on every single job. We talked about that in the last video. And then most of the time we're not changing a whole lot else. Maybe based on the user's preference, we will adjust the dual and single set point parameters, but that's pretty much it. We use the service settings for diagnostic purposes. Indoor unit status is super helpful as well as forced fan on, but not a whole lot in general to change here on most applications. In the next video, I'm going to be doing a quick overview on setting up the strip heat for the FXTQ air handler on VRV heat pump systems. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that. But other than that, that's pretty much it for today, you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button below. And of course, if you have any questions or ideas for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Make sure you guys click the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you guys don't miss out on any future content. Thank you so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you have an awesome day.